Good afternoon, Samia. Hey, Yi, how are you? Good afternoon to you. I'm fine, thank you. Will uh, Shiwe be joining this meeting today? Uh, Shiwe is on vacation this okay. week. Okay. So okay. if you have any specific question, I, I can bring it back to Shiwe. Yeah, I think there's, a, uh, there's something in Alpha 3 marked for him to comment on regarding local storage, but uh, I'll just ping you on it. I'm trying to close out all Alpha 3 milestones and one of them required as input. So I'll just, if you can ping him and when he comes, we can talk about it, not an urgency at this point. Mm. Okay. I'll, I'll just share the specific one here. Hey, David. Hey, David. Hello. You okay? Hey, David, I was thinking this being the meeting which is for implementers to talk first what if we reverse the order and give a million than any other implementers anything they want to bring up first and then we can dive into our topic if that will be a preferred order yeah that's fine okay but then i, think, I, know it, yeah, I think it'd be good if we can if we can uh, at least maybe reserve 10 minutes at the end if we don't get to it to oh yeah i think we're more than 10 looking at millions action item i think is looking for an update so I think it will, we'll have more time, uh, but I'll let yeah. Milan comment who all he needs and how much time he will need. Yeah, I need uh, Rai and Steve. So if only, yeah, I, I guess once both are available, we can continue on my items. Okay, then um, we will- till, Yeah, till then, if there are other discussions we can have, yeah, uh, that, that yeah. sounds good. I think so. I think I like the way uh, David has put together some of these items. I think David, if you want to go, uh, I, or I can share my screen, if you want to share a screen, but the first agenda item, are we ready to close release candidate signature format? I think so we are because for first RC1, we agreed to make it JWT. This being, um, yes, yeah, so I think we can just close this as is and move on. If you want to close one item, call it a win and move on. And for RC2, we can talk about that in a different session. Today, what are we talking about? <clears throat> oh, we oh, there's just, yeah, there's just Sorry. one issue that's at the top of the list. It's just the release candidate candidate signature format. Um, so, just to make sure we're on the same page of if that still needs to be done or not. Is there a oh, this is an issue? Sorry, I didn't see this one. Yeah, so basically this is an issue marked for RC1. I think we agreed for JWS as being our RC1 format long ago. I think we just need to close it and then move on uh, on this specific one. This was marked for RC1, so it's a simple win on this one. Well, it, yes and no. I just, I, this is the conversation that is a signature format, but we also said we were gonna bring in the cozy work and that's what we discussed. That was the other, so as long as it's a, not the, I, I'm fine. I think that is correct. We, yeah, we, we haven't, so one, um, just on that point, I think an important consideration in this spec is we haven't called out the default. We are just saying these are the approved or supported signature format. Uh, we have to make that decision once JWS COSI, once all of that support is done before GA, uh, we need to make the determination what is the default signature format. So in your mind, Malin, is it configurable or do we want all implementations to have the same default signing format? I think default would be would be great. And then allowing the customers to specify if they want a different signature format. Um, I think from a user experience, that might be preferable. So go for consistency more than anything else. Start yeah, with consistency. Yeah, again, that's that's what I think we'll if we have, once we get into the next level of discussion. Uh, okay, it's gonna change, but I think that's a good model. So this is just an issue. What is it? It just is released kind of signature format. What is not merged that would need to be get merged to to close this? Like to your point of simple win. As I read this, it this may or may not be the same as the alpha, and that's fine. 
the only the only quirk there is that we never did version the content that we store, which is always a challenge. So I, we probably have to work through any quirks that happen there, but I I don't know what the action item is here because mm -hmm. PR PR ninety three is says it's merged. Yeah, I think there's no other action item just in closing this. I think it must have slipped through or dragnet to mark it closed. Uh, okay. okay. Okay, let me add a comment on it and move on. And let's now that Steve, you and uh, Roy are here, let's jump on to the uh, to the PRs that Milind wanted to cover so that we cover the implementer sections first. Milind, back to okay. you. Yeah. Give me oh, these are the last two. Just I'm just trying to track with you. So yeah, we're skipping to the last two PRs, 175 and whatever the other number one is. Yeah, let me share screen. And just a reminder for people to sign in. Oh, I'm stuck again with, I didn't give Zoom permissions. Um, <laughs> I didn't give Zoom permissions to share. Um, can you discuss the next item? I'll rejoin the call. Or, or, or Milan, do you want me to share my screen? If that would be easier, I can do that. No, let's cover the next item. Uh, okay. okay. Maybe That's a smaller important. item. Uh, I'll join in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Actually, I have a smaller item in mind. I was right. looking over over this, yeah. So we can quickly cover the uh, uh, the smaller item uh, on this one. Uh, yeah, the consider dropping or moving support for Docker notation and Docker generate that action item. If you can all open that one, we can quickly knock it out. Can you paste here just to? Up yeah, those. I'll paste it in chat. I think uh, it was, I'm pasting it in chat as well. Let's lock it out. So David, can you give us more clarification on that? I think I may have an idea what you're thinking here, but if you can give us more context on this one. Oh, oh, oh. For, the, for the user stories item? No, no, we are skipping to a smaller one, which I thought was the Docker one. Oh yeah, yeah. So this was brought up in uh, actually pretty recent, um, but I think it's it's it was in the PR that was there because we're converting um, over to the Cobra command, and they're migrating, <clears throat> you know, the Docker generate Docker notation. Um, and I, I, you know, there's no documentation that I could find um, on this, and I'm I have no like historical context. I'm not sure why we're even using Docker notation or Docker generate. Um, so I. I'd love to just that that's what that's about is do we, are we doing this or we what are we using it for do we need it if not then in my mind it's just you know so extra coding I can, work. I can I can just give a 30 second um, sorry the 30 second history was this is part of one of the original prototypes that we can consolidate around docker experience so this was the thing where you can actually say docker notary sign docker notary verify um and Shiwei had done an early prototype that was a plugin. Well, I think it's called plugin, whatever they call them, that basically through the Docker CLI, you'd see these commands. That's just background. I, I think we don't have enough time to polish that. And we're hoping that Docker will create a more native experience. So I'm totally fine dropping these. Okay. Uh, Rich, Rich, you were saying something? I want, or was yeah, it? I, yeah, I'm in favor of dropping the. Okay. Yeah, that, um, that'll also decrease our dependencies and other things as well, because we have Docker and the Go mod and a bunch of other stuff. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, if we think that that's useful, I mean, maybe that's just you know put it in a branch or <laughs> different repo or something for future prototyping. But um, I, I don't want us to keep supporting something we don't plan to support in the repo. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, David, do you want to close this item and record our decision on that one? And so okay. Then, yeah, I can. I can just put it in the discussion comment, and then uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have a work item to just remove that or, or move it. Okay. Yeah, so I just we want to bring this back in the future. It's just we we don't have the time to finish it. I'm just I'm highlighting it here just to remind people where it was. Um, and Saji, I, unless you have another opinion of you think this magic we could get finished. But, so, uh, so David, oh, the CLA oh, command that you're sharing, what, who's sharing their screen? Like this is the CLA commands of Docker. What was being shared, those CLA commands? 
So if you say this is me, I'm sharing just to remind okay. folks of this because there's this is this is quite a bit old of a feature that we were doing some initial prototyping. If you say Docker help and you've got plugin, is it plugins? Which Sajay, what was the term that Docker used? Do you remember? Uh, no, this was done as a Docker plugin. So I think. Oh, Docker extension. Is that, anyway. Yeah, Docker remember. extension plugin. But yes. but the point is, I don't think we, like you said, we don't have time to support this or build this out. So just if we agree to drop it, let's just drop it. Okay, I'm doing a plus one on it. I think okay. so. Let's move on this one. Okay, so we covered two small ones. The million is back. Let's give him the floor so he can knock his things out. All right, thanks. Um... Who's sharing screen? I need to. I need to. If you can stop sharing screen, then I can. Yeah. Take hey, yeah. Sorry, I was sharing because somebody else said they couldn't share it. Yeah. Okay. And of course, Zoom ate my command window. So where did there it is? Um. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, we see it. Okay, so just want to get through these open spec PRs. Uh, I separated our designing scheme. Uh, Roy still need your feedback here. I added that section, uh, I think to address your... I'm trying to remember what detail that was. I think you had some feedback. Sorry. Hey, was, I about the, was this about the update path? Um, mm. I think that was probably about the verification plugin, not with signing yeah. scheme. I think for signing scheme, yeah. feedback was around the name. So we changed it from, uh, there's no default in there, the no. default, right? Yeah, it's just notary X509 and notary X509 signing authority. That was one, yeah, that was the main change. And then I see some comments. I quickly wanna address those. Um, That I just replied to because I was a little confused what Pratesh was commenting here. Yeah, which oh, one? Okay. So basically, uh, CRID is critical head is one of the headers where you just populate with all the critical headers in JWS JSON. And now, uh, by JWS standard, create header is optional, but it's not in our case because we always want signing scheme to be present. So it's no longer optional. Okay, that is fine. This This is optional. This yeah. becomes required. Yeah. Okay, that's yes, the piece that I was querying. Like, why are we requiring somebody to set something as opposed to just having a default if it's not specified? Like, what would the sign? This is not. Be? This is not controlled by. This is basically the library generating it. This isn't exposed to the end user. So we define signing scheme. We are saying signing scheme is always required. So therefore, as per JWS, because it is always required, this critical header will also be always required. The critical header is just an array of things that are marked critical. That's that's so, what Ritesh is pointing to that this, yeah. because we added- to... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah because we added signing scheme as a required header in all signatures, this critical no longer is an optional. It becomes required as well. That is what the comment is saying. That's correct. I and guess defaulting, defaulting is more the, an implementation thing, not the spec one. I, I guess I'm just not understand the details of the the crit headers and so forth, but in the sake of brevity, if we do, we have sure. a default. Go so ahead. this is like, this is slightly different, Steve. This is as part of the the JWT 
signing spec, you can have critical headers and you can have optional headers. This is just putting in the optional header as far as the JWT format is concerned, but we're saying, hey, our profile requires it to be set. And it must always be set to this one value. And we think we need to set it as opposed to it being inferred if it's not specified? Because no, yeah, sometime, to... sometime in the future, somebody might do something else, in which case the default won't apply right, if we ever need to change it. So setting it always makes pins it. So rather than pin it to a version, knowing what the default is for that version, we want to be explicit and set it all the time? Correct. Okay, so we just gotta match the text. The text just doesn't match them. Yeah, I just make Which now I'm that. realizing what um, Pratesh was trying to say. Uh, trust policy type based on signing scheme. We don't, as in it, it currently surfaces only for trust store, where you specify trust store, you say it's a CA trust store or a signing authority trust store. Pradesh? Yeah, like I was reading the last sentence, which is like covers the aspect of signature generation and verification formless features that provided by signature produced using a signing scheme. So does it logically make sense to like even have a trust policy depending upon the signature scheme instead of using versioning for it, that? It does. It does if we had a bunch of different, uh, widely different signing schemes. But right now we just right. have two, which are based on X509. So it doesn't make, because trust policy is very user facing. You don't want to make that complicated and you don't know when a new completely different signing scheme will be supported. So till that point, we have a policy which is optimized for X509 and the versioning allows you to vary it in future if you want with breaking, non-breaking changes. Fair enough, we can always take absence as default value here with X5. Yeah. But doesn't that raise a questionable end of in the future weakening versus strengthening? It would be fine if we said, hey, going forward, we strengthen it, but in the future it weakens it. Does that not cause a problem? No, there's a version element in the policy already, which is set to 1.0. So okay. we are basically saying 1.0 version allows you to specify policy for these signing schemes. Say there is some new signing scheme, which is still yeah, XY09, yeah. yeah. So the, right, but I if, remember our last conversation on here was the difference between user sign and a signing service was the distinction of the audit policy that you were gonna tighten up some of the language on, wasn't it, Nolan? Yes, yeah. uh, you are right, let me... Yeah, that was your feedback. Because you were treating them the same without any statement of. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I remember it. <laughs> it was painful. Um, it's in here, signing authority. If you can review this section right now under signing scheme, um, <laughs> line 31, I added this bunch about what are the different type of authorities. Authorities require this validation, logging, monitoring, audit, incident response plan. Uh, what generally a CA needs to demonstrate at a high level, what a TSA needs to demonstrate covered here. And then it says similarly, signing authority yeah. needs to demonstrate signing keys were only used within that service with validated entities that requested for signatures. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. That gives you the a statement of, hey, he, this is equivalent or pretty close to what you could do with your own self signed yeah. certificate, your own certificate. Um, Existing clients, so they must be updated. So think of, so we, tomorrow we introduce a tough signing scheme. So existing clients will not understand it and existing clients will fail. They cannot accept tough signatures because they don't know how to verify it or 
how to process the target.json timestamp, all of that. So this is the correct way, which just says, you need to know about that signing scheme. If you don't know, you just fail the verification. So Which means when we introduce we when we introduce new signing schemes, if you want, if you have environments where you are going to send those signatures, you need to update those clients to a newer version. So in the case of I'm sorry to interrupt, we have to prepare to evacuate. We may need to evacuate. I saw that. Sorry. It's you know with the towers. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Um so the Where is in the window. Yeah, exactly. No, emergency services went off and set an alert here um, for evacuation. Uh, the interesting question here is on the disaster recovery, if somebody brings up an old server, will it just tip over and fail in that case? Or like what is the disaster recovery procedure we expect people to have? Always have a, a snapshot of the, the latest one. I think you, if, if you are consuming the latest types of signatures, you would be expected to use the latest client. Similar yes, to but... say, say a new signature format, right? Older clients will not- Yeah, yeah I understand that. that. I'm just worry, working through the case of a disaster recovery and somebody taking archive bits out and putting the old server back in. What do we expect the behavior? You know, if, for Windows, if you we, we don't sure. expect it the ability to say, hey, revert to an older image and go through the upgrade process to get to the newest one. We always assume that disaster recovery is, is a snapshot of the latest image, correct? Yep. Okay. Yep. I think the piece that I'm struggling with here is the fail versus ignore state, because I, I want to be careful that if somebody puts a new signing scheme and it doesn't just cause something to magically succeed when it shouldn't, because the ignore is it no, no, they, yeah, it won't succeed. That that is what this means. Uh, well, but it, I I think that's what so that's what protects this question. But I, I want to ask a slightly different question, which will help me figure out which way this goes. If I have a particular key configured, the public cert configured, that that's what I want to be used to verify my Acme Rockets production environment. Can I have different signing schemes for the same key? No, signing, so signing scheme operates at a very high level. Signing scheme is, so think of tough as a new signing scheme. It mm -hmm. works quite different than what we have. You may use the same keys. Somebody may share the same keys for generating regular existing signing scheme and a tough base. But the tough based signing process and verification <laughs> process is completely different. It's it's you can think of it as a parallel to no I get that what I'm trying to figure out is the client so thank you. I think that, that's helping. What I'm getting at is as the client that I configure I because I'm still trying to wrap my head around this without being able to touch and feel it that I'm I, I'm still trying to digest all the PRs that are coming through. Mm -hmm. Can I have a client that's configured to the Acme Rockets prod key that is specifying a signing scheme A, when current, what happens is when I try to pull the Netmonitor V1 image, it comes out and says, hey, by the way, it's using this key, but it requires signing scheme B. And the client says, I don't know what signing scheme B is. So it fails with an error that says this was signed with signing scheme B. You are configured with signing scheme A. Therefore, you have enough information to go and upbuild your disaster recovery machine with the current bits. Does that make sense? I think, the, I think the takeaway is you won't be able to verify it. The verification will fail. The detail will be unrecognized signing scheme X. And we know this just to, because this is the piece that I think Ritesh is asking for clarity and I'm trying to also confirm. So if my client is configured with signing scheme B, no, 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 it, it, no, it's not configuring a type. The customers don't configure the signing scheme. Signing scheme is embedded in the signature itself and customers only, I don't have the trust policy update here because it's waiting on the other PR. I will, give me a second. So the, 
the Israeli scenario which I was thinking was, let's say I have an old client that's on the support, let's say X509 schemes, and now someone pushed a signature with a new signing scheme, and I didn't update it, my client. It will fail. It, should it fail. will fail, which is the correct behavior. But uh, but I still have the old signature, which is not a non X five nine. I like I have combination of both the old the supported the, the signing scheme format and the new one. So ideally, the I should uh, the client should be able to verify the old signing scheme, which is supported, and should skip yeah. the newer version. It will continue processing. Basically, it should not just fail saying that okay. I, 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 I don't system. understand that question. As in, as in the, there is a there is an environment where there is an older client. You ask it to verify 10 signatures. Okay, some mm -hmm. of them are known signing schemes. Some of them are not known signing schemes to that particular client. It will mm -hmm. fail the signature verification for unknown signing schemes, but it will do the regular verification, whatever. Oh, so it, it, is yeah, it will continue to basically. Yeah, yep. sounds good, I think. Yeah. I think that Steve? answers my question. What was the summary there? Because this is the piece that I was trying this to is, this is, Yeah, this is per signature. So each signature has an embedded attribute that says what type of signature is it? Is it a regular X509, notary X509? Or is it a X509 signing authority one? And say a hypothetical, this is a tough signature. So, yeah. and, a no, and, a, and a client knows how key. to... It, it, so the key doesn't really matter, just that you know about that signing scheme or not, whether you know how to verify tough signatures or not. But I'm not, so, so what, I'm, what I'm confused on is how does a client, so, because what I heard, this is what I was trying to struggle with. If there's multiple key signs, so there's signing scheme A and there's signing scheme B, what does a client specify in its policy that allows it to fail if the only thing that matches is B and the client doesn't have the right plugin verifier. So, verifier. sure. So, so for the plain X509, you need to configure your CA and TSA wherever required with whatever values. And in your trust store, you say CA colon Acme rockets. Right. This is this is what example that we have been giving. Yep. For signing authority, this trust store will have another type here, slash signing authority, that allows you to specify signing authority certificate. Then here, if we are consuming a signing authority one, you say, I trust for these signatures, I trust signing authority X. For TAF, so which is policy. Like, what I'm getting at yeah, is... What I, what in I'm the hearing, policy, you don't. In the policy, you don't specify the signing scheme type. You just say what is the trust store type. The trust store type is signing authority. It has a different. Okay, so there is a coupling to a signing authority because, with to Roy's point of a disaster recovery, where a machine, like, let's assume that people are provisioning machinery with the binaries that they they need at any one state. And configuration is kind of deployed on demand because environment A was, you know, in my environment, I use this level of notary binaries and everything's fine, but I've got dev staging and prod. I don't want to have different binaries, so I deploy the same binaries and all those, but my configuration is pulled at instancing time and my dev environment has trust policies that have signing authority A support. Signing, sign, not signing authority. What, what do you call it? Signing, signing authority. Signing. Yep. And then my production, or my let's say production is using signing scheme A because we, we don't touch production right away. Dev is configured with signing authority, signing scheme B because we're prototyping it, but I don't have the right binary on there. How do we keep, how do we correlate the new signing authority as requiring a binary that isn't there yet so we get an error so things don't slip through with enough information to say, oh, I got the wrong binary. I need to get a new version. You'll just get an error saying this particular signing scheme in the signature is not supported and it will emit the name of the signing scheme. And because that's and in the trust policy, there's enough information in the trust policy to differentiate. No, no, it's, it's not related to the trust policy. It's, it's basically the notation client itself 
doesn't recognize the value of the signing scheme as say a hypothetical tough. It says, I know only about this X509 and X509 signing authority, doesn't even have to look at the policy or trust store at that point. It's just an unrecognized value. It will fail. And, yeah, it'll fail. Okay. Am I the only one that's confused on this? No, so Very it won't fail the complete verification process. It will just fail the verification of that signature. So in Notary, we provide, we verify all the signatures which can be pulled from our ours. And even if whenever whenever we get one match or one success, we call it verification success. Right. So if you're to your point, this is what I was trying to understand the trust policy. If the trust policy makes a reference to something that was done with signing scheme A, and either is allowed to be passed through, then it would succeed. Just the fact that there's a signing scheme B signature in there is relevant, just because I could have Wabbit Network's signature in there and, and I don't care because in my production environment, everything must be deployed with an Acme signature. Right, exactly. you can have multiple signatures and it okay. will, it will keep on going through till it finds a matching or it exhausts all the signatures. Sounds good. Okay, so that just needs some clarification on what, what is, is, does that mean that, that Pratesh's comment is clarified and it shouldn't fail? It should fail, rather. Well, it okay, fail. it's saying must ignore. I see what he's trying to say. Uh, it should not, it should not ignore. It should fail. Yeah, it should, yeah, it should fail. Well, it fails that particular one and it goes on. To, that's like any other signature that's not configured. Yep. And that will get updated here in this section because we have a whole um, algorithm of how signatures are evaluated. That's where it will get updated, not in this PR or in that document. Yes. Uh, last one is formatting. I'll address these. I, I don't think there are any other like actual spec changes required other than the formatting and this particular being updated to required. All right, um, we'll move to the next one. We spent quite some time on this. The verification plugin one, which we were debating about yes last week, I removed the the signing scheme is separated out so we can make progress. The one just that we just saw, I removed all of the verification, sorry, all of the signing scheme related content in this last update. I'm going to make add another section to address some of the portability concerns and like. What are the different portability scenarios? We'll discuss that on Thursday. All right. Um, next one. The trust store and custom verification level, I got approval from Steve, but you still had, um, I think you had some questions here on the experience and complexity. I, if you have specific questions, wanted to cover that, like. I I had, spe I had specific questions that it got updated enough that, so this is, I'm, you know, I've said this a couple of times now, this is just the part that makes me really nervous. And I'm not saying we block, I'm just I'm calling out the issues so we recognize the risk and figure out how to mitigate it, is we're talking about adding a lot of great functionality, there's some complexity, it is security. We have to find that right balance of the right number of dials that is has the right allowed of usability and without a release that we can put our hands on and play with and going to an RC1 that is backwards compatible, flags and fireworks shooting off. So um, the sooner we can get something merged and functional with an alpha release that we can put our hands on, even if it's from a branch, but like something that we could actually use to validate this experience makes sense from a you know from a project, then cool. So I don't want to block on a code to spec kind of comfort that somehow we can tell the usability by staring at this at the text. 
Sure. Um, saying let's get some hands-on thing going on. Okay. I think I just wanted to say, I think a couple of points. What we did in that PR is we changed this to an array from a single value and we allowed custom levels like this. So this is the simple form where you just say strict, permissive, audit, etc. And then we defined a more complicated form, which is optional if customers are like power users who wants to tweak it. But regardless of that, uh, because you talked about compl complexity of this policy, we, we need to be on the same page regarding this is what we expect users to configure. Even if you provide users some CLI commands, they'll have to specify these elements in that CLI command. So we but need to be- just, This did get like, simpler. I mean, like when I first looked at it, this was a lot more complex. So this is getting simpler. So that's uh, you know a big plus. Remind me, yeah, are these groups required? I, I should be able to assign yep. this to any. Yeah, it is, it is, you can do a star. Okay. And if I do a star, do I have to do anything? Like, can we just say if nothing's specified, then anything from that registry is basically it, it defers to the, the whether there is so, so, so here's the, the kind of the basics. Nothing is trusted by default. You may have trust stores configured on, on your, yeah. in your installation environment, et cetera. But if you run notation without a policy configured with an empty policy, no policy, it's just going to fail every signature. Uh, and you can start with registry scope star. You need to specify signature verification type. We are not defaulting here saying it's defaulted to be strict or audit or skip. You have to specify this. Trust or untrust identities need to be specified. Uh, Identities can be star. So you can say anything coming from this CA or trusted root is broadly trusted. That's not a great way, but we are providing that flexibility. Uh, and the better way is where you say, I explicitly trust this particular identity, which is like in this case, like this is like secure builder. Um, I, I want like, basically everybody to have a very good understanding of this because, and if there are objections, we can discuss those because this is what we will communicate to our customers and users, et cetera. And they need to configure this. So if there are questions around usability or like, can some values be defaulted? Can this be made more minimal? I'm open to those discussions, but like a lot of thought has got, got into this. I don't think it can be compressed beyond this, but I'm open to those conversations. I mean, look, I, I think this is great. You guys have done a lot of work here, so I, I don't want to take anything away from it. It's been a lot of conversations. So it just when you put a lot, say a lot of thought that we, we, this is the part where it's not as broad shared, like we haven't had a chance to, to play with it as well. So again, let's iterate fast, yeah. so it's all good. Um, yeah, I, I think having the- Dylan, one, one question. Uh, yeah. You have signature verification as string and as an object. How are you planning to do polymorphism here on this? Yeah, that was one of Shiva's comment. Um, we either it was that or a more complex configuration. So for usability sake, we have the same key. Uh, I can show you the exact form here. So the final, it's like you either specify signature specification as a single string value or an object. The, the complexity is in the implementation. So the implementation has to has to yeah, yeah. parse I mean, this either would it be, as object would it be better to spring. can we can we just support level audit on that and uh, and be done with so that we can unify the models if you want to. I, I'll comment on the PR if that helps, but that seems to be minor. We can fix it. Yeah, there's yeah, there's already a, <laughs> there's already a comment. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, given given that we end up with some weird serialization bugs always, I think it's just easier to make the object complex and uniform rather than have any kind of polymorphic types, which we have kind of battled with multiple places. That's why. So and that Golan requires. Is, yep. Yeah. So I have the options here. So if if there is preference for this, this is the option that you are talking about. Right, so right. In and that, just put level audit and so they're uniform in some way. That makes the policy a little bit more, a little bit more verbose. 
but if which which seems we are we are doing it because we want to simplify it in on implementation and i i was preferring to simplify it for usability open the discussion you can put, you can put your feedback right. yeah i'll do that thanks um so I'm going to just back to the other one. I think my only fear, and we don't have to block this PR, but I, I would like to rediscuss whether you have to put in a star for registry scope because this, this is just one of the conversations I've had with a couple of customers for various topics that the number of repos that they configure is dynamic and they really don't, they are already managing some of this stiff stuff separately. Yep. So star would be a default and we shouldn't have to have them stuff yet another value in there. Um, so yeah, so so we we had we discussed that particular point uh, on usability, and we looked at how some of other security policies, other formats, what guidelines they follow, and like compared to other types of policies where you can default and kind of make it invisible, or because this is a security related policy, we we leaned on it needs to be more explicit. For somebody reviewing a policy, for somebody writing a policy, for an auditor reading a policy, it is very explicit. So wherever we have stars, all those stars are explicit. Those are not like if the registry scope is skipped, it, if you remove that, it just assumes it to be star. That is not the case. Uh, for that specific reason that this is a security policy, and not any other type of configuration. It it makes it it, it 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 there's a little more burden on having to specify it, but I think it is the right trade-off in this particular case. Uh, like I said, let, let's separate it out because right? we do have some of the stuff to get to. Can you go back to the 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 full form instead of the diff? Sure. Um, this one. You know, the previous, the, the document view, the whole view. Yeah, yep. So scroll up, scroll up, won't oh, stop. I just wanted to see the scroll until they get version at the top here. Keep going, down, uh, down. You have the version. Uh, oh, slow down, no, you went too far. I'm trying to read the first <laughs> one and the second one. Definition. I got it, all right, okay, okay, sure. So this, the first one says a set of, Artifacts signed by Wabbit Networks pulled from Acme Rocket Repository. And the next one says it's pulled from the Wabbit Networks Repository. The registry scope is Acme, registry scope is Wabbit Networks. Trust store, Acme Rockets. And the third one says policy for custom verification policy and the trust store is Acme Rockets as well. Is, is that no, not the images? Scope? The images are different. So the registry scope says for what images you're writing the policy. And then some of them are sharing the same trust store. Okay. I was just trying to sort out because we bounce around between Acme and Wabbit Networks as the repository. Yeah, the promotion scenario that he's trying to cover. It's yeah, there's a there's a scenario up top here, which says, uh, what is the kind yeah. of the straw man scenario we are using to describe to write the policies for? Yeah, I was just reading the comments, trying to make sure the comments made sense and that matched the policy you were trying Got to it. set, and and see we didn't miss something here, whether they were inverted somewhere. Okay, thanks, Melinda. Um, all right, I'll go to the, so the cozy envelope one, um, in the last meeting, we just touched upon this for a few minutes, wanted to make sure we covered it. Uh, I think this is my last item. Um, we started looking at the, uh, the security report and the changes that were done this will yeah. take this will take some time this will take about 5 to 10 days a week or two that is the timeline i'm looking for to go through the review uh, and it's not just me looking at this 
Um, just wanted to communicate that. But we have, we have started looking into this. No, okay. sir, look, we, we have some updates that we have to make to the COSI spec and you know revive the work to be more con consistent with the current state. So I, you know, as long as you're looking on anywhere starting, we'll basically we're gonna start working on this in parallel. So um, hopefully these things will just converge. Yeah, I think what will help is once we have the, I think the signing scheme is pretty close. This one, I will try to, I think by Thursday, if we close the open spec PRs, then what, what it will look like is, um, sorry, yeah. You'll, you'll have the baseline signature spec here and the JWS definition here. So mm -hmm. in the COSI branch, you can create a branch again from this as baseline mm -hmm. and create a COSI Cozy version in the Cozy branch, and we can iterate on that. Does that make Sounds sense? Good. All right. Um, that's about it, uh, Samir David. So I just threw one item in the chat, um, staying on the technical side. Um, we have the notation login command that um, we still need a reviewer on. Um, so just wondering if someone, someone on the AWS side can can take a look at that. So the login was on my plate. Uh, I haven't been able to because I just have, just have these spec things to unlock. Um, I will I will spend tomorrow looking at the login. Uh, the other big PR was the directory structure. Rakesh looked at those, and I think he approved the directory structure one. Okay. Yeah, David, I can share my screen if you want me want me to, and we can quickly go through the items you've put on the board. Yeah, if you want to just click on the link that I have in the in the uh, agenda, and that'd be good. Uh, yeah, I I can. Let me share my screen. Uh, Hack MT. Yep, looking at it. Uh, so we closed the first one, we did this one, we did these two, let's move on to in and out of scope for user stories for RC1, right? Uh, so this, I already have it open, uh, but I can open a new window. <clears throat> Yeah, so let's look at the items we have identified uh, required for RC1, and then we can go ahead and look at RC2 and RC3 if we just see if we're not missing anything, right? So notation sign with remote keys, right? This is the remote key store and not using private keys on local client. That's what I interpret this user story to mean. Um, and the converse of that is the verification when you verify uh, and the images are, of course, being pulled, or signatures are being pulled from a registry. So I see the two of the two of them going hand in hand with that description. Anybody has other meanings to these two, from a user story perspective? Are we? Is the detail here just called out that we're going to support a a key that a private key that could be local, or it could be remote for remote signing service? But the we don't support local image signing in this release because we keep on getting ca uh, caught up in that. No, no. I think what we are, I think you're talking about the signing with local keys. I think we talked about for the first release signing with local keys should be kept out, and we can no. think about how to solve the case for test certificate. That's a different discussion we can have. But signing with different? local keys is how is a local? How do we know that's a test certificate versus not for local signing? That's a problem we'll solve. Like, I'm not disagreeing, we have to solve this problem. We have to solve this. But this interpretation for me was signing with uh, remote keys and not using local keys for production use. Right, but that's, so I agree with that on guidance and I'm not yep. trying to infer anything by magically saying those words. I yep. just don't know how to disambiguate the two. And I just wanna really make sure that somebody can do the, you know, the, 
spin up some notary binaries, download them, and start playing with a local copy of a registry of distribution or somewhere else. Yeah, and, yeah, and I believe there are uh, issues for that. I think some people have documented some idea there that it could be a test certificate, um, and we can have a specific test command, and that test command generates a test certificate. Milan, I think you have given, or Rakesh, you have given some thought to it. So if we keep uh, signing for RC1 to be just with remote key store for the production use case for the- I don't understand that. I, I'm sorry, yeah. I, I don't have a on this one, but I just, I don't understand how, unless you're gonna introduce some sign with test command, we're still saying- That's an idea. That's I don't an like idea. That. No, no, I don't like the idea. Just because I mentioned just like I would be really careful about it. And we already support this. So I want to be careful we're not spending a bunch of time unwinding something that's that's already there as we're trying to close down a chip. Yeah, that's, I think that's why I'm tweaking. Yeah, this. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I think the challenge was what what Roy identified for us, right? Roy laid down four or five options for us, Milan commented on it. The point is we know that the library we were planning to use has been deprecated. Had it been deprecated at a different time we probably would have made a different decision, but going in with the deprecated library uh, is the concern at this point, unless we can invest more time to do it differently. But I thought the deprecated library was to support certs that had a password that were protected, that the current environment, are we saying the library we're using today is deprecated? Or a new the library, library we were planning to use, I believe the library we were planning to use, that's the investigation Shiva did, the library we were planning to use to password encrypt local keys yes, okay. has been deprecated. And that's right. what Shiva reported. Yep. So, in, so, okay, so that was new functionality we were considering adding that we couldn't because the library is deprecated, makes sense. But that doesn't mean that we would unwind what we already have. Correct, so, and that is correct, Steve. What we have today is from a security perspective, not recommended, right? Because the keys are in clean, clear, plain text. We don't want somebody to go into production with keys in plain plain text. I look, fundamentally, I don't really disagree with you. If somebody's yeah. got a really hardened lockdown environment and that's the way they want to implement it, I you know I don't want to block them either. We have IoT scenarios and others where they have so many levels of security on things that it's like it's a it's a choice for them to configure, and I, don't, I want to make sure we don't block it. That's all. Okay, I think you know, I, I, I want to clarify. I want to clarify a little bit here. So, so currently we have the, I think the generate test cert or generate, mm -hmm. generate test cert, right? So that uses unencrypted keys. Plain I thought cert. we also ran into a problem there, Melinda, that we needed a two key pair because of the other changes. Sorry, come again. Can... Oh, with the, uh, that is related to the um, chain or the hierarchy requirements, right? Yeah, in which case then the generating using a single self sign certificate is going to fail, isn't it? Yep, yep, yep. We'll we'll cover that separately. I'm still tracking that down. Um, it's there on my list. Um, but this like just the general concept of like what do you want to support from local signing? I think at least the path that I was looking at is in the alpha releases, we can continue to have the generate test cert command, which uses unencrypted. But in a RC and GA, we need to have something stronger than that. So we can, at RC1, we should probably drop the generate test cert because that is not a secure mechanism. Uh, post RC1, in RC1, RC2, or before GA, we can figure out, this will require some more time investment on what is a secure way of doing local keys local keys on on disk and so, this uh, is actually that, yeah this is covered um in the notation cert cred um with a comment from ye um the notation cert generate test um so this is um i know <laughs> it relates to signing but it, it's i mean we're kind of getting into that pointed conversation around that so on 44 of notation cert cred um, the other the other thing um, that comes out of this is if we do fully drop it, uh, the test automation becomes challenging <laughs> for end-to-end -end test automation, which is one of the goals we said we wanted to have, um, I believe, for RC1. Um, yeah, without without using plugins, <laughs> um, which obviously then starts to 
to introduce other complexities, right? Yeah, that makes sense. I think in, in terms of how this issue is worded, it should just talk about supporting remote signing for RC1, which we are already having that feature yeah. in alphas. We should create a separate user story for local signing if it is already yeah, yeah there and that and yeah, yeah and we should discuss the discuss the path right. forward there for local signing. right yeah and some of these and some of these some of these things right like for instance notation um plugin list that was brought up right we have we have that there but this is just to kind of cl clarify because there's there's been a lot of stuff that's been flying around with you know trust orders and other other changes like I'm I'm not you know I'm not sure uh you know would would it would it still work after everything that's been merged to main and everything else right um or if there's other things from the people here uh who's, who think well for rc1 we need to add or tweak or fix or do this for notation plugin functionality right um so so that's yeah. kind of why i have them up there i mean it, it's yep. <laughs> so we're all on the same page right um if it's done it's done then then great we all agree um no, yep. that may that makes sense. I I can clarify that the notation key crud. I I haven't played around with the the plugin part of key crud works. I don't know about the local keys. Uh, the cert crud. The cert crud does not work with the updated trust store trust policy. That needs to be revamped. So if you try to use cert add, that adds a verification certificate into a config.json. That is from the initial alpha one. That doesn't work at all with the latest updates, which implement trust or trust policy. So there needs to be a separate set of CRUD commands that allow you to manage trust policy, trust store. That requires starting from CLI spec for how we will provide commands, and then we go implement it. Okay. Does that make so, sense? Any questions there? So, so for for RC one then uh, to kind of close out on this one number, yep. uh, look for line item forty four there, uh, notation cert crud right or step above, which yep. is on discuss. Uh, do do we want to do the work then to integrate what's currently working with the trust store? I think it's a usability question that for RC1, do you want to have the CLI commands present to manipulate trust store and trust policy? It is it is more complex because the trust store, trust policy are more complex than just saying verify against the single cert, which was supported in alpha one. Uh, I think my last position was we can do RC1 where where we still have sign and verify as the core commands, and the trust policy trust store can be manually updated. Uh, I think there were some differences in opinion there. I think Steve thought there should be commands because it is more difficult to manipulate uh, those. Just to help a little bit. So, look, one, the policy got a little simpler, so I'm a little less angst. Two, we're all trying to get something out. Three, a, a CRUD command will be based on what the content is. So from a typical tooling scenario, usually you get the runtime solidified, then you put you know, the, the usability tooling atop it. So I think for now, let's just focus on getting the trust or J, uh, JSON formatting in. And as we, I, I hope we will have some amount of churn because I can't imagine we get it right the first time. So I'm hoping for turn we have a chance to play, tweak, and feel comfortable. After that's done, we can decide, hey, here's a simple command that you can add that would do it. And we can decide whether that's worth pulling into RC1. But for now, I'm fine. Personally, I'm fine waiting till the runtime solidifies a little bit more to get this in. So yeah, so I I think I'm I'm I like the idea of having kind of both, right? So but not but the but so effectively right now we leave notation cert as is a CLI, which doesn't integrate with trust store. You could add trust store and, and if it if it works manually, um, fine, you kind of have two two paths and then post RC1, you know, you you get that that integrated where the command no, line. Is I, no, I want to clarify that. The the cert commands 
the cert commands don't work. The cert commands add certs in a config.json file, whichever verification logic doesn't look at. So, okay. so basically so, when we yeah. when we moved from file-based trust store, which is what that supported, to directory based, that command broke. So that command okay. is in CLI. It'll add something to a file, but it doesn't impact, influence anything else. Okay. Yeah. So if we built if we built right now in alpha, the notation cert would be broken. Yeah. We should sub okay. it out for now. And once we get more comfortable with the new runtime from a config to directory structures and the various directory structures, the various files, as we get our hands on it and we test it on Windows, on the you know, WSL2, on Mac, on blah, blah, and the various things, I think we'll have some stability that we'll tweak. And once we get the stability tweaked, then we can put some polish on it with some CLIs, but I wouldn't worry about it right now. I'm more nervous about getting the runtime now. Yeah, that sounds good. So line number 44, I think with the discussion we are saying, let's push it out for future, like mark it for a future milestone. We'll come back to it after we get some runtime experience. Okay, let's quickly, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I also, I don't think we've really, I mean, we keep goals and we keep batting this around as well, but the generate, the cert generate test, um, I mean, I, I think it's pretty essential to have. I mean, I get that it's unsecure, um, but I, I just think, for us, um, until we get a better solution, I, I don't see an alternative uh, to to that uh, option for testing and for demos and for other things. Um, yeah, I agree. I think I, I think the search generate test command I think is a good idea to keep, but that's a separate discussion that's not shown here in the user stories, right? We have it captured as a separate item. I can bring it up for us. Yeah, to we should, I think it. David's point is we should have a user story for getting started. Well, uh, I'm saying we yeah, we can create a user story and we can track it via user story or we can use an existing one. For example, we have this this one over here. We have local on disk signing, signing. We have multiple of those issues open and we can combine them if we, if we need to. That's fine, David. If you want to open a new user story and track it via that, we can do that as well. So can we create a different user story like allowing a signing with test certificate as compared to allowing local signing? Yep, we can. We can. Yeah. We can just create a new user story. Because you can restrict. Because if we generate a test certificate, we can still restrict signing based on certificate parameters, whatever you generate. Yep, and no, that makes sense. sense. And okay. just to clarify, it's not because this one's kind of written as a plugin is needed for local signing. And we're saying that the default notation binary, without any plugins, curl down one binary. I should be able to to do generate a certificate, sign, verify, get you know, five minutes of excitement and then decide to go further. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that makes sense. So is there just, Sorry. I mean, this Sorry. may be a, a simple question for people to answer. Is there, is there an alternative option like with the open SSL or some other cert generation tool that we don't necessarily have to use notation cert generate test? My memory was yep. there wasn't enough binaries and face it was too complicated to stitch together. So that's why we, we did the generate tester command. Yeah, open SSL, open SSL commands are complicated, but it does work. Okay. So complicated getting started, not well aligned. <laughs> okay. And okay, just as so, I'm looking at this, just as what we're committing to RC1, because we're over, I just think, I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I got this covered, that even though it's going to take two weeks, where did the COSI work land? Is that still, is that tracked? There, there's a separate PR for COSI work. I think uh, what David is trying us to do is let's agree on the user stories first, and then we can look at the individual trees later. I think he's making us look at the forest right now. So That's agree fine. on these user experiences, we go on the individual ones. Yes, okay. COSI is still up for uh, which release does it come in? So uh, we're, we're saying it's RC1 unless you guys tell us for something. Like, I want us to shift from, we've done the security reviews, we're taking longer. I want to make sure that your plan is, is to bring in an RC1 unless something comes up that says it can't. So well, it's, yeah, this yeah. comes back to, I mean, it comes back to also timelines, right? I yeah. mean, so like if, in, in my mind, I mean, I would, I would like to, and I don't know, maybe this 
and it helps uh, with ease of mind, but I mean, I'd, I'd much rather release an alpha three by the end of the month here. And because there's so, so many changes and things um, and, and they keep, keep things moving um, versus wait another two months or whatever and have a fuller RC. So yeah. Yeah, um, probably was RC1. It wasn't alpha, blah, blah, blah. It was, I want to make sure the plan, our plan is we're committed to getting the cozy work done quickly by, by whatever RC1 dates is what, if you have an alpha three, we want to do tomorrow, it won't be done. So I, I'm, this is not a pushback one way or the other on alpha three, it's just in RC1 and our plan is to bring that in. Okay, so yeah, I think what David and I have talked about in the past is should we do an alpha three? I think it's a good use case to do an alpha three. Should we do RC one the next day? We we can we we can look at that once alpha three is is yep. is there. Uh, we we talked about this, right? What's the goal of alpha three to RC one? We discussed all that. Let's go back here, uh, David. Have we solved? Have we agreed on the item you brought up? Like we have talked about these four belong in RC one. We talked about cert cut does not belong in RC one for right now. Key crud should work, but somebody has to go and test it. Notation plugin list should work, but somebody needs to go and test it. But these are not new work items to me, but if they are, then those are bugs that we need to fix. Can we go ahead and mark this one, David, key, if you're sorry, okay? Just or key, there is pieces of key that, that are broken because they do put in config. So the only thing I think we're saying for key is notation key generate test cert. Yeah. I think is the only thing we'll save. Yep. Yep. I think that's what I called out here is saying, if you can define the user experience, what we are looking for. And I think what David and I talked about is we'll create a new user story talking about what we want the key crit to do for, uh, for, for the first release. But this key crit by itself should probably should move out of RC1 because the keys are in a remote KMS, right? So you're not deleting the keys in remote KMS. You're just referring to the keys in remote KMS. Yeah, I think the big, the big thing, the big theme here that just to kind of summarize between key and cert, and I think this is the hang up, but just hopefully we can try and close on is, is the whole directory store, trust store integration, right? That's a big shift. Um, and, and uh, you know, if we want to, you know, try and have those things um, in, yeah. I mean, right now it's, it's broken to some extent, right? And so the question is, yeah. how, how do we, how do we move forward? Uh, do we, do we prioritize getting that integration working now or do we um, try and do some workarounds to make the current thing work without the integration? Um, that's the big, the, big, the big deal because for us, I mean, we, we need to have um, you know, that kind of ended story continuing to function. Um, yeah, I, I think David, what will help is if we detail out what you want from the user story. I think what's, what's Pressing is right now is we are reading too many meanings into what these user stories mean. Just like we talked about local signing can be kept out of it by looking at this title here. But then Steve brought up local signing, which we're saying will handle a different user story. So if these yeah. are more crisp, we can we, we, we can agree on them. Uh, yeah, yeah I, think, I think everybody, it seems like no one's disagreeing with what you have listed for RC1 there. I, I don't okay. think. Um, and I'm also, I'm also, I, I, I've heard, I think those other RC2 stories, um, I, I, it seems like I've also heard no, from multiple meetings, no pushback that those should be any earlier. Um, so it's kind of like, I think the only one that's up in the air from what I that's gather is, is the key, the notation key insert. Inspect. Which, does that sound about right? Yep. Yeah. And I, I'm fine with us prototyping in a branch or something as we, because I don't even know if we know what the output of that will be yet. Like we conceptually know it, but turning it into an actual PR and having devs turn on the binaries, I think we have a little more time to do that. So that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And then, just, and then no, the only other thing I'll just say for, for the RC1 stuff is just if inside the user stories, like if people think there is or is not actual more work to do, um, obviously the, the user, the notation, trust policy, store, and authentication. I mean, obviously, that's not not really done yet. Um, but the other three, uh, I don't, I don't know, right? Um, that's that's where I need other folks to chime in. To, to yeah, know. I think we have looked at the forest. Let's look at the trees on our Thursday meeting, if not earlier, 
or we can meet tomorrow to look at the trees to be specific. Now that we've agreed that these four stories belong in RC1, we can look at the individual trees assigned to these stories. And there's more than one for each one of them. And I want to talk about RC2 for a second. These things are in RC1, like the work required. We need to have a notation, not push signature, sorry, my bad. Uh, yes, that's fine. Sorry, my bad. I was, I was reading something else into these meanings. We need to have meanings here. Uh, wait a minute, something just popped into RC1. What popped in? The plugin list, because we talked about that, right? So that's already there. It's already working. Yeah, the plugin list. OK. Well, yeah. OK, let's stop today, or unless you want to continue, because now we can go back and look at all the things we, we wanted to look at from individual tracking perspectives. There are lots of open issues and PRs which need to be brought to a closure. Um, many of them have duplicates. For example, if you give me one minute of your time, I'll show you that. Where is that? Uh, so for example, uh, is that, I had it ready, yes. So right now, things which are open, there are 72 items, including roadmap items, user stories and documentation. 72 items are open, right? If I just say, hey, show me everything which is related to say uh, CLI, right? And I see 12 items. So, and if you just look at those 12 items related to CLI, you will quickly see that there's a pattern here. We have duplicates for some of them here. And some of them are user improvement stories, like have a better error command. So these are the individual trees to the forest we were talking about, to those user stories. We can look at them together on Thursday, or if people are open, we can meet tomorrow as well. David, your thoughts on this meeting tomorrow to cover the individual uh, on these items or just meet on Thursday? Yeah, um, I think, I mean, I think there's a lot to still kind of kind of go through. Um, so I, I think it'd be good to to sync again, but I don't want to, I don't want to hold up people from, I mean, the, the priorities also getting the existing PRs merged that are up yeah, there. Yeah, I agree. So I don't, I don't want to take away from that, but, um, but yeah, I feel like we're getting much closer. Okay, then let's just meet at our regular time on Thursday. And then uh, we can look at which PRs have been closed. And if you close some of these items individually before then. Anybody else? Are we at the end of the agenda list? I think we're we out of time. So we know we are not at the end of the agenda list. I think what we discuss is we cover these individual stories uh, on Thursday, Milan. I think if you okay. go back to the agenda list, we covered, uh, we talked about this briefly, that it's good to have an alpha three milestone uh, before we have an RC1. And I'm proposing the alpha three and RC1 don't have to be too far apart from each other, but let's do a crawl walk around on okay. this one. Just at least some time to pull and play with it. Can we yep. create, and I don't know if we create one, can we create an alpha one milestone? Let's there is see. an alpha three milestone already. Okay, great, perfect. I um, quickly want to, if you can open that fourth bullet point link again, the PR okay. 164. Um, uh, if you can scroll down a bit. Yeah, right there, uh, scroll up, scroll up. Yeah, right there. Uh, uh, such a while I have you on the call. So that I just want to close on this. We even me and Shiva have been just this, this probably is one of the only items open here. The we can we can change it to signature verification level audit. The the reason why I had just signature verification string is because the custom policy will be used quite rarely. Like you can assume 90, 95% of the users will just use that. Yeah, the one that is highlighted right now, signature verification strict or change it to audit, et cetera. And probably, I don't know, like 5% or even less will 
use a custom policy where they refer a level and then override certain switches. And if like the general consensus is, if we should still have the object form throughout, I, I can change it. Like, yeah, I just I, want to the, give the, you the, the data point around why I felt strongly for the other option. Yeah, no, okay. I, I think uh, my reading of this is somebody is going to modify uh, how the signature is going to be verified. They see all the related properties together, right? Whether it's a UI or a CLI, so they can do signature verification, set level is equal to strict, or if it's a UI, they get to choose strict and then they can choose override or whatever that is. So to me, right. having everything under the same object, even from a usability standpoint, makes it more clearer. Otherwise they have two properties that they have to deal with, which is signature verification, uh, override settings and verification level settings, which that was the reason why from a JSON object, we can keep it simple. I mean, keep it, keep the object simple, but when we build a CLI, maybe we can uh, simplify those things as to, they only have to type one command that would give you everything together. I don't want to, it's just hard for me to uh, think about problems after we have done an object that has flat level properties plus mixed properties and might as well make everything hierarchical is kind of where I was going. I would rather not have two, two type representation for the same thing in the serialization format. Right. Um, all right, we can switch it. I think we still have till RC1 to kind of play with it. And if we want to make any changes, I'll change it to the object form uniformly. I think I echo, I echo Roy's uh, feeling because I've fixed serialization security bugs on similar problems. <laughs> so I don't want to go there. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Cool, thanks. Okay. Thanks for your time. Okay, uh, folks. I didn't have anything else in me. Right. Thanks, folks. Okay, we'll touch base on Monday and go through the discuss list and look at the trees more. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thursday, you'll be right. Today's Monday. <laughs> have a good day, folks. Okay, bye.